Thank You for this Word today, God. Let Your Word be like a double-edged sword, Father God, dividing the flesh, dividing the law and the Spirit, dividing the flesh from the Spirit, God. Father, we thank You, God, rightly dividing Your Word of truth, God, oracles from heaven, God, holy messages, God. Father, we thank You for the Spirit of Elijah, God, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of unction, Spirit of faith. By your blood, Jesus, we are clean. By your word, we are clean. Renew our minds. Let your mind be in us, God. Not the mind of the world, not the mind of things below, but let our minds be on things above. Father, we thank you for the spirit of truth, for the spirit of burning, for the spirit of prophecy, God. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Today's message is called, In a House. In a House. There are vessels in a house, and we are those vessels. God is showing me the wheat is for harvesting, and the tares are for burning. What is the biggest sin of all mankind? It's called unbelief. This is the unforgivable sin. God is using all things together for His purpose. He is also exposing the nakedness. Unbelief is nakedness. The church of Lacedonia, for the shame of their nakedness, shall be revealed among many. The nakedness of the lack of faith. Without faith, you're naked. Because without faith, you cannot please God. And without faith, you're not being clothed with His righteousness. Without faith, you cannot be saved. Without faith, you cannot do nothing. Without faith, you are bound. Without faith, you have nothing. Faith is the evidence of what you have. Faith is the evidence of what you're going to be. Faith is the evidence of everything in Christianity. And without faith, you're dead. 2 Timothy 2, uh, 10 through 21. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Paul is writing to Timothy. Paul was going through some things. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying. Not an unfaithful saying, but a faithful saying. For if we were dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we suffer with Him, we will reign with Him. We shall also live. And if we be dead with Him, we'll live with Him. If we suffer with Him, and if we deny Him, He will deny us. If we believe not, yet He abideth faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Faith cannot deny faith. Fear receives fear. Faith cannot deny faith. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. Of these things put in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they that strive in words for no profit. Striving with words. There's so many striving words out there right now. People are striving with words of man's wisdom, words of their own interpretation of the Bible, words of their own thinking, words of their own interpretation, words of their own mindsets, words of their own beliefs. But the Spirit has one word, and it's clothed in faith and truth. Charging them before the Lord that strive not about the words of no prophet, but to the subverting of the hearers. 
Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. The shame of their nakedness shall re be revealed among the many. Without faith you're naked. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. A lot of people are dividing the word, but it's not rightly. Who are you to say that? Rightly dividing the word of truth. It means it's divided rightly. Yes, it must be divided. Yes, it must be discerned. And yes, it must. But the word must have faith. And if you're dividing the word in fear, it's not rightly. If you're dividing the word in your own interpretation, it's not rightly. If you're dividing the word in your own religiosity, it's not rightly. But those that know the word divide it rightly. And they know it. And they can't be proved by debating. It's just known by their works. Your faith will show your works and your works will have a signature on it, whether it's from below or from beneath. Of these, put in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, not without profit, subverting the hearers, show yourself to prove unto God a work that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word, profane, vain babblings, vain, vain gospels, vain babblings, vain, vain, selfish ambitions, fear, vain babblings, words of no use, words that bring no faith, words that do not edify, words that do not encourage. Well, words that encourage bring courage. Encourage. Oh, I'm encouraging my brother. What do you mean you're encouraging them? Encouraging them to, have, to stay in their fear? That's not encouraging them. That's called divination. Encourage brings courage from one vessel to the other. We're supposed to encourage one another. Not impose fear, impose doubt, and impose unbelief on one another. That's not encouraging. That's demonic chatter. That's Bane babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as a canker. Of whom Hymenaeus and Pilatus. Who concerning the truth. Concerning the truth. Erred. Saying that the resurrection has passed already. Saying that God doesn't want us to do this. Jesus doesn't want us to do this. In other words, with their own gospel, with their own interpretation, with, with their own mindset, with their own thinking, because it wasn't true. And overthrow the faith of some. That's what we got right now. Christians, believers, brothers, sisters, trying to overthrow the faith of other people's faith. And I'm warning you, you're being marked by God. Nevertheless, the foundation of God is sure, having this seal, that the Lord knows them that are His. The Lord knows them that are the sons and daughters of faith. The Lord knows them that are walking in faith. Because they're not even judging the people that are striving, that are having a hard time in faith. They're just preaching it and doing it. And we have other people coming against the words of faith. Having this seal, them that know that they are His, let every one that nameth the Lord Jesus Christ depart from iniquity. Lack of faith is iniquity. Coming against them that are preaching and teaching faith is iniquity. And Jesus said, I never knew you. You who work iniquity. You who work out of fear. You who work for the world. You who work for your own vain babbling and your own desires. That's what he's saying. God's gonna, God is shaking everything right now that can be shaken. That what, what will remain? The glory, the power, 
in the honor. The honor for Him. He cannot get any honor if we don't get any glory. He can't get any honor if we don't walk in the glory. He can't get any glory if we don't honor Him rightly. All things work together for His good. Not for your good. Not for your kingdom. Not for your ways. All things working together for His good. That's what He's doing. That's what He's saying. And Jesus, in the General Assembly, Hebrews 12, 23-29, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven and the God that judges all. And the spirits of the just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. He is the mediator of the new covenant. Not your pastor. Not the Facebook Jezebel. Not the gainsayers, the sisters of the fear, fear mongers or the talkers of their own opinions or the ones moving in divination or the ones that uh, worship Baal. No, Jesus Christ is the mediator. Who judges all things for the spirit of the just men be made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, of the blood of the sprinkling, speaketh a better, speaks better things than Abel. See that you do not refuse him that speaketh for... If they escape not him who refused him, spoke on the earth, much more shall they not escape and turn away him that speaks from heaven. Him that speaks from heaven. heaven heavenly speech is wrapped and clothed in faith. Heavenly speech is not seasoned with fear. Heavenly speech has no compromise. Heavenly speech doesn't have clauses. Heavenly speech doesn't say but now or then. It's determined. No matter what times in the Bible, every single time, Paul, laws were being changed against him. What did Paul do? He did what he was supposed to do from God. Who are you listening to? The crowd? Or the remnant. Mediators of a new covenant, the blood of the sprinkling, Jesus, and for them that spoke, do not refuse him that speaks. For more shall we not escape him that turned away them that speaks from heaven, whose voice shook the earth, but now has promise saying yet once more I'll shake not the earth only but also the heaven and now God is also speaking through his vessels the vessels the treasure in us is speaking out of us out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water living water comes out of faith dead waters come out of fear living water comes out of the throne of God Dead waters come out of the canals of deadness, of dead religion, of carnality, of fear. doesn't even matter what. It doesn't say we're invincible, but we will not have fear of anything that comes around us or upon us. And these things that are made, those things which cannot be shaken, may remain. What's that? Glory. Gold. Silver. Glory. Spirit of God. Carnality can be shaken. The earth can be burned. But those that are of God live forever in glory. God wants to shake everything out of you that's burnable. That everything out of you that can be tried in the fire and stand in the glory. And yet, and this word, yet once more signify the removing of those things that are shaken, the things that are made, the things that things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom, receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Faith moves you one direction and fear moves you the next direction. But even that, 
Sometimes your faith will keep you stand, stay, steadfast and unmovable and unshakable. Because once you're in the right position and in the right place, you're there. Nothing will move you. Receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace where we may serve God acceptingly with reverence and godly fear. Godly fear has nothing to do with the fear of this earth or the fear of the devil or the fear of anything. Because if you fear God, you don't fear the devil. If you fear God, you walk in faith. If you fear God, you do not worry about the, the headlines of the world or the lies of the devil. For our God is an all-consuming fire. So we're wrapped in faith and it's our God that's an all-consuming fire and He's shaking everything that can be shaken that the only thing that remains is Him and you. You and Him, Him and you. The two shall become one. One new man in Christ Jesus. We're all one into the kingdom of God. The gold represents the glory. In 1 Peter 1, 3 through 11. Blessed be the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, which when according to His abundant mercies has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, for me, hopefully. Who are kept by the power of God through what? Through faith. Kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. If your faith fails you, salvation might not be there tomorrow. According to the Word of God, not the soothsayers or the preachers preaching their own false grace. I'm talking about the Word of God. Until salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, in the end time, in the very end. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Those that walk in faith shall endure till the end. Everyone else might not. It's not promised. Faith is the seal of the promise. Faith is the evidence of the promise. Faith is... Fear is not. And a double-minded man has faith today and fear tomorrow. Faith today and fear tomorrow. Receives nothing from... Salvation comes from above and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Salvation comes from above and His name is Jesus. And if you don't have faith in Him, you're, you're still trying to be saved by your works using Scripture out of context in the sense of false grace and faith. But your false grace has turned in, 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 into works because now you're believing for your works of saying a prayer or your works of false repentance has saved you. But it's faith that saves us. And it's a continuous thing. Our faith is supposed to be increasing, not decreasing. It starts with the mustard seed. And, it, and, and we water it and we water it and it grows and it takes over the whole. Such is the kingdom of heaven. Wherefore, ye greatly rejoice through now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial or the trying of your faith, the testing of your faith, what do you mean? God test, is testing your faith. Right now, today, in this day and hour, God, God was testing their faith in the book of Acts. He's testing our faith right now. The trial of your faith, all the time, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor. Be found unto praise and honor. Wow. The trying of your faith may be found a praise and honor. Of honor who? Of Him who sent us. Him who saved us. Him who is sanctifying us. Him who is setting us apart. Him 
the God of all creation, the God of Abraham, the, the God that is of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God I am, He is called Yahweh. Through Him, believing that you rejoice, joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory, Though it be tried with fire, it may be found in the praise and honor and glory at, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That means it starts now. Things are only going to get worse. Things are only going to get worse. And people's faith is failing them today. And things are getting going to get worse. Dark gets darker, but faith is supposed to get larger. The more faith you have, the more light you have. The more light you have, the more glory you have. The more glory you have, the more oil you have. The more oil you have, the more fire you have. The more fire you have, the more you'll be seen by God. Receiving it, unspeakable, full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. The end of your faith is the salvation of your soul. The end of your faith. Not the beginning of your faith when you said, Yes, God, I do, I believe you. The end of your faith work at the salvation of your souls is rightly dividing the word of truth. Of which salvation the prophets have acquired and searched diligently for prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was and then did signify when testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. The suffering brings glory. The pressing brings glory. The oil is the glory of the fire. The, 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 the threshing floor bring, gets the wheat. The suffering brings the glory. But God is very upset because some of the persecution and suffering is coming from proclaimed Christians. False brethren. Faithless, perverse generation. How is glory manifested to fire? How do you get oil out of, out of olives? Crush them. Suffering brings glory. The oil is the glory. We are lambs led to the slaughter. Get with the program. James Chapter 1, a servant of God of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entirely wanting nothing. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. And that he... See, the problem is many, they're asking the wrong sources. They want wisdom, so they turn on the news. And then someone on the news says, the president or this science institute said, this is the best way to stay safe. This is the best way to not get sick. This is the best way to do this or do that. So they're seeking the wisdom of the world. He said, ask of Him that is from above. <laughs> Our wisdom doesn't come from man. It comes from above. And then people with earthly wisdom want to argue with people because, and they don't even know what they're talking about. Because they're carnal. They're chickens. Chickens trying to rebuke eagles. How stupid does that look? Imagine that a beautiful eagle and a dirty chicken with poop all over his feet starts rebuking an eagle that's just been soaring in the sky, so beautiful, and came down just for a little, uh, to get his, his, his beak broken off so he can get a new beak, going through his malting season, going through his 
season and, and a little chicken comes up with all the little Jezebel chickens all around, little chicks, all dirty with poop all over them, screaming at the eagles, telling them what they should do because look at us chickens. We got wisdom. We're so smart, not like you. And we're just down here for a season trying to get people to get their wings. And the little chickens, the little dirty ones, are talking faith out of the... So the eagles were flying and all of a sudden they started hanging around with the chickens. And now they don't even know how to get off their feet again. And chickens trying to turn eagles into to look like them. What kind of foolishness is that? That's what we have it. In a house, we have vessels of gold, silver, some of prepared for the master's use, and some prepared for a great house. There are vessels, not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of hay, wood, and earth. Some for honor and some for dishonor. If any man purge himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. Wow. In a house. In a house. Well, we are the house of God. Purge himself. Not only vessels of gold and silver, but of hay, wood, and stubble. What? Hay, wood, and stubble burns. No matter how much heat you put on gold, it just gets purifier and purifier. One will burn away into nothing. The other one burns into way into glory. One burns into nothing. The other burns away into into more purification. One is running from the fire, one stays in the fire. Vessels, we're all vessels. One of dishonor and one of honor. One is wood and of the earth. Chickens, eagles, spiritual, non-spiritual. Glory, unsanctified. For let his perfect work, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives it out liberally, not Fox News, CBN, CNN, not Professor so-and-so and, and chickens and hens. Ask of God, and he will give it to you. Then you go get your wisdom from carnality, and you try to, you try to come against God's prophets. I'm warning you, whoever you may be, you're in trouble with thee because if you don't, if you don't stop it, God's going to stamp you out and He's going to put you on the threshing floor. And He's going to spank you. It's causing division. And a house divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. And God is working all things together for His good. This is all for His good. Whatever's going on right now in your life, it's for His good. It brings out the glory. Luke 18.8 says, I tell you that, He will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall He find faith on the earth very simple will he find faith when he comes everybody has faith but is your faith in above or is it below is your faith in you or in God is your faith in scientists in the world or faith in the kingdom yeah you might you might argue that you have faith but you really don't have faith. The faith that he's talking is the faith in him. The faith in his word. The faith in his power. The faith in him. And the faith in his, in his power to come. Every man have its perfect work that he may be made perfect, wanting nothing. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He that giveth to all men liberally and braideth not. Because whoever's 
promoting fear has a Jezebel spirit and they're bringing divination and making people double think their faith. That's a shame. That's called occult practices. That's called witchcraft. White or black, whatever it might be. It might be good stuff. It's called witchcraft. If I'm walking in the glory and you come and start telling me things and I start double thinking of my freedom and what God's told me to do, what messenger are you from? Above or beneath? And I'm telling you, God's going to God's gonna, God's, God's gonna do something, or you might just be deceived with the deceivers. Counted your portion with the hypocrites. Hypocrisy is anti faith. Because what you believe, you follow. And what you follow, you adhere to. And what you adhere to is the works of the faith of what you believe and see to. That's what it is. But him, let him ask in faith for wisdom from God, not for man. And let him ask of God, he that giveth to all men liberally and braideth not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that waver is like the wave of the sea. It's like the world is what's seen. Because in Revelation it says, the sea is the world. And the world is like chicken little. Running around with their head cut off. They don't know where they're going. They don't know where they came from. They don't know what's going on. Then they're going to run for safety, but they don't know where it is, so they're running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Like waves in the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive nothing from the Lord. For a double-minded man, a double kingdom man, a double agent, Double agent. Russian, you come here and you're a spy, you're a double agent. Or any, 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 any nation. You, you, we're ambassadors from, from heaven or you're an ambassador from the earth. Which one is it? Pick, pick, pick. Now let us take advantage of what things we might have on the earth. I'm going to get into that in a minute. For our own advantage, for what is above. But once that's taken away, we still need to come from above. No matter what. For let not a man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. No wonder you don't have any faith because it comes from above. You can't have faith when you're seeking natural guidance, worldly guidance, worldly sorrow. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Let the rich man be made low. Because the flower of the grass shall fade away. For the sun is sooner risen with the burning of the heat. But wither as, as the grass and the flower fall away and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So does the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endures the temptation of fear. Blessed is the man who endures. For when he was tried, he shall receive a crown which the Lord promised to them that love Him. And He said, if you love Him, you'll obey Him. And if you love Him, you'll believe Him. Not the news. Not the false brother. Not the chickens. You'll believe Him. The eagles and the prophets. Those that are, are moving in the spirits. Moving in the Spirit. But every man, when he is tempted... When he is drawn away by his own lust or his own fear and, and is enticed, enticed, when fear and lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin and unbelief, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Jesus brings forth life through faith. Sin brings forth death through fear. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-minded woman, mankind, anyone is unstable when you don't have one thing. Faith. Can't receive nothing from above. No wonder you're so lost. Fear will blind you. 
Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. There is no variable, neither shadow of turning. Of His own will He begot us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to talk, when it has not faith, and slow to be angry. For the wrath of man worketh not in the righteousness of God. Wherefore, apart from all filthiness and simplicity of naughtiness, and receive the meekness and grafted word, which is able to save your soul. But be ye doers of the word, doers of faith. Faithful servants, doers of faith, faithful servants, doers of the word. The word is the word of faith, the word of truth. And without faith, we cannot please him. And without faith, it is impossible to please him who was and is and is to come. Today, I am encouraging you. I am implanting courage in you in whatever times because this is nothing. You're shaking right now because you're worldly and God's shaking you. So we can shake the fear out of you. So you can stand in great darkness with faith. Unmerited faith. Unmeasurable faith. Faith that no matter what happens, your sound mind and heart. If you choose to save your life, you lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll save it. So in other words, if you get the fear out of you, faith is before you in the kingdom of life. If you bow down to fear, eventually you'll, you're doing the fear because you're fearing your life. And your life is in His hands, or is it in yours? So this is the great simplicity of the gospel. Fear and faith, two kingdoms colliding. And God is revealing through His gracious mercy in this time, he's revealing who is who and what is what. Receive the meekness of the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For as many that be hearers of the word and not a doer, is like a man beholding a natural glass, for beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and forgetteth what manner he forget whose he is and what he is and where he's going and what it's all about. He forgets what it's all about because now it's all about him. Like a mirror, his own face, looking at him. It's me, I gotta save my life. I gotta save my life. I gotta save my life. Jesus didn't save his life. He said, I'm here to give my life for a ransom for many. Jesus said, if you wanna follow me, deny yourself and pick up your cross. So without faith, you can't pick up a cross. Fear doesn't pick up crosses. But whosoever looketh into the perfect liberty of the, the law of liberty and continue there and is being not a for, forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. What's a doer of a work? A faithful servant. Not a fearful chicken. Eagles fly high. Why? Because they're being moved by the Spirit of God. God is doing all the work. Right? Like Joe was preaching the other night about the, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Eagles are just soaring. Not too much work, but they're going all over the place. They're moving in the Spirit. Jesus was moving in the Spirit. He was doing so much and seemed to be doing so little because he wasn't rushing to the occasion of fear. He wasn't moved by the things all around him. He just moved by what he saw the Father doing. Be doers of the work. This man shall be blessed indeed. Faithful people are blessed indeed. Fearful people are going to lack everything. Spiritual things, carnal things, everything. Faithful people aren't going to lack natural things or spiritual things. Not at all. Faithful people don't store up for fear. They give away for faith. Because it's more blessed to give than receive. Oh, but i got to see it. If you have to see it, you don't believe it. We walk by faith, not by sight. 
Believing what you see is not believing. That's just evidence of carnality. If any man among you seem to be religious or a follower of Christ and bridleth not his tongue, but to seize his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. But pure religion and undefiled before God and Father is to visit the orphan and the widow in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. What? To be unequally yoked with unbelievers, even in the house. In the house there are vessels of gold, wood, and gold and silver and hay, wood and stubble. One is earthly, one is heavenly. One is from above and one is from beneath. And that's why I say God is doing it right now. Walking together. A house divided cannot stand. Right now God's showing the division in the house. The division in it's not in faith. Oh, but you you gotta be you got you, you gotta use your head, brother. No. My head is on on things above. Because if I don't fear, then I'm fine. If I have faith, then I'm fine. And if, I, if my head's above, I'm being led by who? The Father of lights. By faith. The author and finisher of my faith is Jesus. He's the one leading me. He's authoring. But you come on or you come around and you want to talk from below and make me question hearing from above. That's witchcraft. Walking in faith... And then here comes someone bringing fear report. You, sh you can't do that. Don't you know what's going on? Don't you do this and don't you? And then to attack brothers and sisters of faith. But claim to be of faith. See, you can't claim to be of faith. Your fruits show your faith. Your works show your faith. Your works have shown you naked. Your works have shown you, your words and your works have shown who's a testimony you believe. It's really clean and clear. Thank God that somebody's not adhering to the to Babylon. It's not the wisdom of the world, but of what spirit we're being led by. A house divided cannot stand. And I'm not talking about even one little little churches, the house of God in the world cannot be divided. God's going to sift and He is sifting. He is getting the shaft away from the wheat. He is getting the wheat and He's starting to divide what is going to go into the, to hell for burning and the wheat into His garner, into His vats, overflowing with new wine. It's His wheat. Wheat and tares grow together. But in time of harvest, they begin to be separated. And who ends up separating them once and for all isn't even, it's the angels. Read your Bible, people. We have no rights in the kingdom, but we have rights here on earth right now. But the Christians that aren't even using your rights that you can walk in faith is even showing the shame of your nakedness because you're the church of last and earth. You, have, you thought you had everything and you had need of nothing. But now you don't have enough toilet paper. Shame of your nakedness. You thought you had need of nothing. Your cars are paid, your bills, you have a nice business. Now it's all taken away and all right. Now you're freaking out. Shame of your nakedness. Now you're selling all your stocks and bonds because it's, the market's crashing because you're, you're running for fear. The shame of your nakedness. Yeah, you were mighty in faith when... When everything was going easy. Faith can't be tested until things start to shake. <laughs> what did you think your faith was just about? Going to church and reading the Bible? Faith is tested, tried by the fire of God. And God is, out of His mercy, showing you your condition, where you are right now. Are you going to beat up the brothers of faith because of your pride? Are you going to talk down to them and tell them how stupid they are when God's saying how precious and how anointed they are, and how favorable they are, and how much He's going to bless them in the times in these next four years? Are you going to continue to be on the side of the soothsayers, and the backbiters, and the gossipers, and the haters? Or are you just going to repent? It's up to you today. What are you going to do? 
We have no rights in the kingdom, but we have them. Even Paul used his rights, and the false church won't even use their rights. Oh, brother, put this thing up. We all have to do You're disobeying the laws of the land. Well, so did Paul. And then Paul actually used the, ball, the laws of one land to get him out of trouble in another jurisdiction or division. But where we live right now, we can actually be here right now having this communion. But who else is doing it? Nobody. Why? Fear of getting sick or fear of persecution? Fear of getting sick or fear of what people are going to say about them? They don't care about people. They don't do that. You know what? We care about people. That's why we're here. We care about people so we don't want that fear to come in so we're no earthly good. We want to be totally heavenly minded that we're so earthly good that we, we carry the glory and the healing and the power and, and all the thing. Yeah, we have faith. Because of who we believe, not for who we are, well, not for our own strength, but for because of Him. Because of Him. And I'm telling you, talk about what happened in the book of Acts when they were putting their mouth on men and women of God. You're going to be hurt. And pr- now, the, the ones of faith aren't even talking bad. They're just encouraging the faith and they're getting, they're getting persecuted by so-called believers. God says, whose side are you on? His or the devil's? Are you carnal? Because if you are, you're already separated from God because God is spiritual. We have no rights in the kingdom, but we have them here. Let's look at what Paul even did. Acts 22, 19 through 30. And we just got, we just got the green flag to be able to have church. And, and, and most every church stayed home anyway because they already... The devil already feared them into that and did all that. Now they're like, they looked at the Constitution and they looked at different things and say, hey, we really can't do this. We have to, ha- this is more essential than anything. And now they all stayed home anyway. What, what, kind of, what kind of testimony is that? Oh, but we, we don't want to hurt. We love, we're going to love. That's not love. Love is to obey Him. And when you have faith, nothing will touch you. Put your hand right in leprosy and lick it with your finger and it won't touch you. If, if God is your God and you drink any deadly thing and it will not harm you. If no sickness, virus, disease can come near you. And then they'll throw out this scripture. Well, it's even in the Bible. Well, that was Old Testament and it was actually their house. And, and back then they were actually killing uh, sheep and lambs and, and taking the blood and putting it over their doorposts. But right now we are the house of God. So now what are you saying? Am I going to hide myself in me or am I already hidden in him? How am I going to hide myself in a house when there's no power over that house anymore because the power is in the house of God and it's Jesus and it's his blood. No longer by the blood of goats and, 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 and uh, bulls and all that, but by his blood he entered in once, sealing us with the blood of God. And now we are the house of God. When two or three are gathered in His name, He is there. And I got news for you. Even when there's two and three not gathered, He's there. Because He is that treasure in these earthly vessels. You get so religious, you say, oh, we got to get... No, He's there. He never leaves me or never forsakes me. So what are you talking about? With you not rightly dividing the word of truth, you're causing many to stumble into fear. And it's wrong. And it's demonic. And you need to repent. You need to repent. But we're not even bashing other churches that aren't. Have, we're just trying to encourage them to do it. Do what you have, have, have the, the authority even to do. Now, what are you going to do when you can't even, when they change the laws? You're not even standing for the laws. That God, God has graciously, men and women of faith have died and shed their blood for you to stand on. You're giving it away. Just like dirty laundry to the laundry person. You're getting just like Las Vegas drive to service. How religious is that? What do you got to drive to do anything? What are you, Catholic? In prison, and beat in every synagogue to them that believed on me. So what, they were getting beaten what? Because they were allowed to get beaten. Because if, if there wasn't a law that they could get beaten, then the person that was beaten them would get arrested for battery or assaults, right? So obviously they were able to get beaten. 
And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, and also standing by, and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them, and slew him, and he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee for hence unto the Gentiles. And he gave him an audience, and to the word of God he lifted up their voices and said, What fell from the earth? What fell from the earth? For it is not fit that we should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw durst unto the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought unto the castle. And he bade that they should be they examined by the scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they were bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion, unto the the mayor, the chief of police that stood by, is it, is it lawful for you to tell me not to have church? Is it lawful for you to tell me to stay home? Is it lawful for you to tell me not to use this glory, this power to go heal the world? Is it lawful for you to tell me to stay home when God has commanded me that I am the light of the world and I shall not be hid? I'm the light of the world and I go into all the world and nothing can touch me that I carry the glory. Even in the in, in Genesis when they threw down the plagues, none of them came to the Jews. Don't you get the revelation? Even if this is a plague from God, it will not touch you. If you're remnant, if you're believing, if you walk in faith, that's what it is. Or are you of the world? Well, you're showing who you're from. We're in this world, but we're not of it. But you're acting just like the world. And he said to him, when the sincerity, he said to him, Is it lawful to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? He wasn't even condemned yet. They're condemning us with their words. We're not, we're not even doing anything wrong. But it's the church more. I haven't heard anyone in the world say nothing against me. Because I don't really fellowship with the world. And if they did, I wouldn't even care. Because it's the world. You already know that. But the church, backing the world, coming against believers of faith, you're going to be the one that turned your brothers and sisters in in the end. It's you, the enemies of the cross. It's great some obtain this freedom. And Paul said, Oh my God, I was listening to Christian radio yesterday told you guys, I got so sick to my stomach. Although we're not allowed to go out this Sunday, and it's Palm Sunday and the following Sunday, and we're all learning what to do at home, Christian radio, Joy Radio, and where we live. Well, we're going to play some music. And you know what we're going to do for protection of our house? And... This is a great idea. We're going to go out and find palms and we're all going to make reefs and put them on our door. I was like, really? That's what we're going to do now as Christians? And that's what they're teaching you in, in, in the majority. Come on now. Where is even that in the Bible? Jesus walked on palms. They did that. It was now we've made it a tradition now. We're going to put palms in the day. He says, your tradition make the gospel unaffected, powerless. Now it's the blood of Jesus, and we already have it on our door, because our door is our mouth. Our door is our eyes. Our door is our ears. We hear from Him. We see for Him. We talk for Him. You want to be carnal one day and spiritual the next? It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. A double-minded man is unstable. You will not hear your healing. You'll, you will get something from the earth because you fear it. But stop. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. God's going to start making examples. Forget about some false sheriff trying to make an example of a pastor. When God starts making examples of unbelieving Christians, you better look out because it's not going to be pretty. That's one thing that really bothers him. Really bothers him. The chief captain said unto the son, Obtain this man, 
Then the chief captain come and said unto him, Tell me that thou art a Roman? He said, Yep. Are you an American? I mean, we're not. We're heavenly. We have more rights from God. I'm not saying rights. We have no rights because we laid on our life and on this earth, but we have many rights in heaven that were endowed by Him. But we also have rights as being uh, Americans. We have a constitution. We have the right to, the right to peacefully assemble that there shall be no law made to come against it. But right, one little, one little uh, shaking, one little little thing that you is born into a big thing. You've ready to give away your rights. That shows you the condition, the carnality, the sh your nakedness that you're living in right now. And I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to make, open your eyes to, to encourage you, to encourage you, impart that courage into you because you're shaking in your shoes. And even if anything happens, or even if I get sick, I'm going to die in faith. No matter what. Because no matter what, you still can get sick. So you're going to, and you're really going to be fearful. Then you're going to say, that point, you're going to say, man, I wish I just would have believed. I wish I would have went to hung out with believers. I'm sorry, I, I did everything. I, I, I ordered a 12-pack of Lysol. I have toilet paper. I have, uh, you know, I did everything. I'm wearing a mask. I got gloves. I got a house. I still got sick. And now I look like an idiot. And if someone's standing out, touching everyone's sick in faith and praying, I believe God's going to keep them. And if He doesn't, He's got another reason. But even if they get sick, at least, hey, well, you know what? But we get, who gets all the glory right now? The doctors and the nurses on the front line. Yeah, praise God, they have more faith than you. Unbelieving doctors and nurses are at least willing to die for what they believe. To die for what they learned their whole life. To die for what they laid down all their schooling to learn. What are you laying down for what you're learning in the Bible? Come on, it's, it, you, 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 you've been witchcraft. You're messed up, man, in your mind. You need, a, you need to wake up, man. You need an awakening. You need a shaking. And this is what God's doing. And if your pride, if you don't lay down your pride and, and shut your mouth, God's going to do it for you. And it's not going to be pretty. Pride comes before a fall. Hey, you want to be broke? You want to be begging? You want to be on the street? Because that's where prideful people end up. Vagabonds. Without a, without a church, you're already vagabond. Without a family, without faith. Wanting, even wish you would die, but... God doesn't even let, didn't even let him die in the land of Nod. He said, do not touch Cain. He's going to want to die, but don't touch him. That's what it says in the book of Revelation. When all these plagues are released by God, not by, the, not by the devil. What's being released on Christians is persecution, hate, and somebody's body can hurt me. But nothing supernaturally from God will touch me because I am covered in the blood. That is the whole testimony of the, of the deliverance of Moses and the Jewish people in the times of the showdown with Pharaoh and Moses. Nothing touched them because there was what? Light in Gosha. Because there was what? Blood on the doorpost. Yes, we're sealed with the blood of Jesus. But you keep washing the blood off every day. You get in fear. Fear will wash that blood right off of you. And we don't want to make a song like that because it's not funny. And then you attack the ones that are trying to instill faith and call them prideful. Call them arrogant. Call them, God calls it boldness. He calls it standing for righteousness. He calls it faith with works. You call it sin. He calls it holy. You call it wrong. He calls it right. You call it lies. He calls it truth. You call it selfishness. He calls it selflessness. What are you calling God today? Then straightway they departed from which they had, and they examined him, and the chief captain looked him over and also were afraid. Let them be afraid of touching the glory of God. Let them be afraid of arresting a pastor. Let them be afraid of touching God's elect. Because right now you have laws and you have protection. 
and you're giving them away right now already. Because they had gone, been bound him. And on tomorrow, because he would have known that certain wherefore was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priest and the council to appear and brought Paul and set them before them. And then it also talks later on that then they said, let's release him, a Roman. And he's like, they wanted to sneak him out the back door. He's like, no, you arrested me in front of everybody. You're going to let me go in front of everybody. In other words, you arrested me and I walked through the front door. You're going to take me right out the front door. <laughs> Luke 21, verse 7, continued. And they having him, the master, and these things, and what sign shall be when you come? Take heed that no one deceive you. I'm going to carry through this fast, so don't say I've missed a line. I'm, many will say I'm the Christ. There will be wars, commotions. All these things will come to pass. Nation rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Satan's kingdom, fear and faith. Earthquakes. All these things, they will lay hands on you, put you in jail. They will persecute you and deliver you. Yeah, yeah, we know the Christians are doing, but the world's going to do that too soon. <laughs> that that if you got that right there, that should be really sad. The world is eventually going to do this. We know the church is doing this right now, but later on, the world's actually going to do it. It's going to be real. And they'll put their hands on you, persecute you, deliver you, and this. Up to the, to the synagogues. See, the religious people. One world religion. And you guess what? You're going to have a religion that's going to be part of the one world religion. Christian will be in that too. That's just the phony ones. And in prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for, for Jesus' sake. For faith. For faith. For faith. And, it, and they shall turn to you as a testimony. Settle it there in your heart. Today we need to settle it in our hearts. Settle it in your hearts. Not to meditate before that shall, what you shall answer. Just settle in your heart. For I will give you a mouth of wisdom from above, right? Because that, to get you to that point, you've got to have faith. And God pours out wisdom. Which all your adversaries shall not be able to resist it. And that's going to make them matter. They got even matter and matter Jesus because His words they could not confound. They could not confute. They could not come against it because they were words from heaven. And even the Pharisees and Sadducees that knew the letter so well, they knew what was being said. And they could not refute it. And shall... And give a mouth of wisdom, and, the, and, the, and your adversaries will not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you will be betrayed by parents and children and kinfolk and family members and church members and false brethren. And be put to death and be hated by all them that live in fear. But there shall not be a hair on your head that perish. And in your patience possess you your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, and when you see the desol desolation therefore is nigh, right now, then let them which are in Judah flee. No, this is not right now, but it's coming. It's right at the door is what I'm saying. To flee to the mountains, let them which are in the midst depart out, and let them that are in the countries therefore enter in. These be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that have child. Woe unto them that are so connected to their earthly things. Woe to them in those days. They shall be in great distress. But these ones won't. Wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. 
And they shall be led away into captivity, into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down. And the Gentiles, and the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and the seas roar, and the sea, and the waves roaring. Remember what we talked about before with the waves and the ocean? For distress in the earth and the nations, men's hearts failing them for what? Faith? For fear. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Just early, he says, settle it in your heart. He just said it earlier. Settle it in your heart. Settle faith in your heart right now. Right now, God, this is a, this is a test run. This is a, a mock wedding. What do they call that when you're, when, when, when you, a trial, uh, before something's real, they, a rehearsal. Rehearsal. This little plague thing right now is a rehearsal showing you it's, it's God's mercy showing you what, what, what you're really made of right now and showing you you need more oil. You need more oil. You need more oil. The Son of Man coming in the clouds with all great power. And when you see these things come to pass, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption is close. Keep looking at Jesus. Don't keep focused. Fear is all around you, but you keep your eye on faith. Keep your eye on faith. I'm encouraging you today. And if you're prideful and rebellious, you're offended. But guess what? Jesus was the rock of offense. The word is defensive to those that don't want to follow it. The word is defensive when you don't want to adhere to it. The word is offensive when you want to do it your way. There's no other way than faith. Faith is the door and, G- and Jesus is the way. And he spoke a parable, said the fig tree and all the trees. And when it, he now shoot forth... Yea, and know that once selves that summer is nigh, and so likewise shall it come to pass when, this, when the kingdom of God is at hand. Is at hand. Verily I say unto you that, generation, that this generation shall not pass away till it be fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but will you pass away with it? My words shall not pass away. We shall live by every word of faith. We shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We shall live. Just that right there is such a beautiful thing. We shall live. They shall die. We shall live even if we die today. We shall live. We shall live. We shall live. We shall live. live. Fear is death. Faith is life. Fear is death. Faith is life. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering, drunkenness, cares of this life, fears of this world, cares of this life, and also so shall it come to you unawares. Because God is also going to strip everything that's an idol in your life too, if you're a Christian. Because fear will take it. Fear will take everything, everything from you. Fear will take If you're storing up, God will take it. For a snare shall it come upon them that dwell upon the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always, and be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. To stand before Jesus. And that day, time of He teaching in the temple, and the night He went out and abode to the mount called Mount Olives, and the people came early in the morning to the temple to hear Him. That last part, they need to read it. I should have edited it out, but I want to watch therefore and pray always. Plagues do not touch us in any type of tribulation if they're coming from God. God is not going to beat up His bride. He's not going to plague His children. It's all there. We're in Psalms 91. We're, 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 we're in Psalms 91. We're also walking in, 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 in Psalms 23 too. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me, not CNN, not uh, Fox News, not scientists or doctors so-and-so. He leads me. He is my shepherd. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. He heals my body. He leads me by the still waters. He leads me to the paths of righteousness. He leads me to green pastures. He leads me, not you, not fear. He is. And He is the most faithful man that ever walked the earth. 
We are the house of God. So the double-minded, they come against the building. Then the next, they come against the building. If they come against you, they're coming against God's building. His wheat in the garner. The earth is His threshing floor right now. The earth is His threshing floor. And your secret place should be your threshing floor. Judge yourself. Check yourself. Break your heart before Him and, and thresh it so He doesn't have to thresh you. So He doesn't have to beat you. You know how they get the weed out? They roll heavy things over it. They crush it. They beat it. And... They get, and that's what's going on right now in the end times. Is to threat. And then the angels come and they separate it. Now we have all these, but the angels come and separate the wheat from the tare. But right now God's threshing. He's breaking. He's molding. He's shaping. He's making. He's threshing. He's, he's getting the chaff off the wheat because this, hell needs the fire of the chaff to burn. It doesn't really. I'm just saying it's, it's like, Hell is going to get real hot at the end of the age because there's going to be so much shaft thrown in at one time. It's going to blow up. Ever got some dry stuff in a thing and some of those dry leaves and everything, you love throwing them on a fire because they go... Because they're dry, dead. Deadness is dry. But the wheat, even if it's dry, it can be made into beautiful bread. Beautiful bread to be part of that lump of heaven. The lump of heaven. Few there will find it. Well, you know, you think about right now, okay, well, there's maybe seven and a half billion people. But how many people have there been since Adam and Eve? Well, roughly, scientifically, because no one, I mean, who's, who's been counting, they say around 100 billion. So two billion is a lot of people to go into heaven. Great multitude. Or maybe it's, 20 billion, few there that find it. How much is a few? Who knows God's terminology, but maybe 80% since the beginning. And there might be way more than they even thought. Who knows? That's a lot of people. Do not find it. Narrow is the way and broad is the way to destruction. And faith is the only way to get on the narrow way. It is the, it's the road of faith. Faith is the, is the highway to heaven. There's always a remnant. Everybody can stand up. Our faith must surpass our common sense. See, our faith must surpass our common sense. Why? Because there's nothing common about God. God is not common. And common sense has nothing to do. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. This mind must be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. He didn't think what was common. He obeyed what His Father said. Our faith must surpass our common sense. And do not let another's common sense get in the way of your faith because they're a stumbling block there's good stumbling block and there's bad stumbling blocks there's stumbling blocks that cause your brother to fall I've seen people say a few months later see, Man, what happened to you you were full of faith now you're like don't even know what's going on under depression and ang anxious fearful you're like what happened then I'll go then the second thing I said who you been listening to who you been hanging around with there it is right there. Well, who you've been listening to, you were an eagle, now you're hanging around with dirty chickens. Find your way. Faith hangs out with faith. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. God has a... Um, social distancing... And it's called, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's the holy <laughs> social distancing from God. Do not 
in part and to partake with unbelievers and believers that you will get messed up. It's like hearing lies and truth all day and then sitting, sitting all night trying to filter them out when if you just got around the right thing, it filters itself out. There's no burden. Father, we thank you that we will be a faithful bride, God. We will not fornicate with the world. We will not fornicate with strange fire, with strange doctrines, with strange doctrines of Balaam. God, as you are exposing the doctrines of Balaam, the works of the Nicolaitans, the teachings of Jezebel, and also the fearful brothers and sisters in the Lacedonian church and all of these things, God. Let us be the church of Philadelphia, the church of real love. Love that in encourages, imparts encouragement, not half, half-heartedness, half half-truths, but the power of God unto salvation, the cross, the blood of Jesus, and the power of God unto faith. Father, let our faith be encouraged today. We're not here to bring division unless it's dividing unto you, dividing off the shaft. But holiness. Revelation 17 says, Come out from among her. Flee from Babylon. Come out from among him. Touch not the fearful things. Fearful is the unclean things that the devil wants you to touch. He wants you to eat fear. He wants you to to worship fear. He wants you to to be basked in. He wants you to listen to fear. He wants you to say, that is the smart thing to do. That is the wisdom of the world. But Paul said, I don't come to you with, with, with the wisdom of this world. I don't come to you enticing words of man's wisdom. But I come to you with rhema word from heaven. I come from you for the wisdom of above. Because I... Because that comes from faith. And no matter what laws they change or whatever, I'm going to stick up and I'm going to bring forth the laws of Romans and the things that I can. I'm an American still. There still is a constitution. There still is even a, a laws even under the laws right now that said we can be together. Who, where are you forming? What are you doing? What are you practicing? What are you stretching? Is it your faith or is it fear? What are you pulling on? What are you working out? In your own salvation with fear and trembling of God, not the world. You will not work out nothing. You work in you something that God never wanted to put in you. And it's the spirit of this age. Father, we thank you again that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, we pray for every soul, every everybody, God, as your word goes forth, God, as you blast your things upon the earth, as you expand it, God, as you preach the gospel and the great harvest, is ripe and the, and the workers are few, the faithful ones. God doesn't want to use anybody that's going to be spitting fear and faith out to get people into the kingdom of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So, Father, we thank You that You are the author and finisher of our faith, of our faith. And the devil is the author and finisher of their fear. And we choose faith today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.